Charis TV. I have the grace. You can't stop me. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Are you excited to be here today? I believe the Lord God Almighty will grant you your heart's desire today in Jesus' name. Let me not take time. I won't speak a lot. I've already spoken so many things. Let me tell you something. God has his own way of doing things. There is a song that we love to sing most of the time that says, not by mighty, not by power, but by your spirit. Indeed, if we can yield to the spirit of God, we will never go astray. If we can listen to the spirit of the Lord, we will never get lost. is because along the road we start using our own understanding and our own knowledge. But when we come to the kingdom, this kingdom that we are in, your understanding, your knowledge does not work. Only the word of God and his spirit works in us. Hallelujah. As the person that is close to you, do you have the spirit of the Lord? God must help you today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Okay, let us go to the word of the Lord. I don't want to take time. I pray in Jesus' name. Let us go to the book of First Timothy, chapter 6. We go and read verse 12. I'm reading. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Again, let's go to the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected. But I press on that I may lay the hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I repeat, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Let us pray. Father, God of heaven and earth, Father, we are going to share your word, the bread of life. God, give us revelations and reveal it unto us according to your will in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today's heading says, hold fast. Now what we have read, the Bible says, fight a good fight of faith. So when we are fighting a good fight of faith, we are fighting because there is a level that has been placed for each and every one of us. In other words, I'm trying to say each and every person that is here today, there is a level that God has placed for you. There is somewhere where God wants to take you. 
Like if we can look in the life of Paul the apostle. His plan was I want to reach Rome. I get it. So in his calling, in whatever he was doing, he was always reminding himself that whatever I am meeting along the road, it must not take me off what I'm looking at or take away my focus because the reason of me following Christ and doing what I'm doing, I want to reach home. So now Paul went on and on doing whatever he was doing. And along the road, when Paul was doing what he was doing, that's where he came to write the second verse that says, Not that I ever attained. Not that I have already gotten what I am searching for. The issue here is I press on, I hold on, I hold fast, I hold tightly. Why? So that I can be able to reach where God wants me to reach. Many of us Christians today, we are failing to reach our destinies not because God does not want us to reach them. Why? Because our ears are too much open. Our eyes too much open. Our mouth too much open. Along the road we become lost and we lose the direction of the way that God wants us to move in. Paul here is saying Agiso so I want to say unto you children of Charis today you haven't reached where God wants you to reach but what you have to do is today hold fast hallelujah things might not be working the way you were thinking things may not be going the way you were thinking they will go your business might not be what you were thinking it will be. But today I am here to tell you there is a secret when you are a child of God the only thing that you have to do is to hold fast. Hallelujah. You know Paul says I have not yet attained why? Because Paul knew he was lucky. He was not like me and you. Paul was lucky to know his destiny. I won't die until I reach Rome. Paul was beaten by stones. Paul was uh, beaten by a snake. Many things happened to the life of Paul. But even though those things happen. Because he hasn't yet reached Rome, he never died before he reached his destiny. Hallelujah. So can you tell the person that is close to you, I have a destiny. I must reach my destiny. I must reach where God wants me to reach. Hallelujah. But the secret of all these things, hold on, Charalela. You know, in this life of Christianity, let me try to explain a little bit according to my little experience. When you are a child of God, people most of the time laugh at you. When you are a child of God, people most of the time ridicule you. When you are a child of God, people sometimes come and ask you, where is your God? Mm. Sometimes when God is it's, it's like you know an honor. Sometimes when God blesses them with a little thing, they come to you and say, "Can you please tell me who is serving a living God here?" I told you a long time ago. Let's go do where, 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 and we do one, two, three, four, five. And after doing one, two, three, four, five, you are going to have 
what you are searching for and you said no now look at me look at what i have now putata shivu the problem is rina bana ba jehova tell the person that is close to you where now wana wa jehova ankiri we are children of jehova because we have been born by the blood eh we have been born afresh not by flesh not by blood by by the spirit of god but now the problem with us children of god is whenever these problems come our way whenever sickness rejection failure whatever comes your way delay comes your way you forget to stand your stand and you hold on to the salvation that god has promised through it that he is going to bless you when you go in bless you when you go out he is going to bless your children he is going to bless your nation he is going to do this and do this and do that and you forgot all the things that are written in the bible that god has promised to you that he will do them unto you and so now when we see people coming to us and saying those kind of things ritoma utatiwa riada danga chivenda we become mixed up we no longer understand what road we have to take now i want to plea with you today can you be a christian who is stubborn Can you just to that today you decide I want to be a stubborn Christian. This is what stubborn Christians do. When the wind blows this way they go the opposite direction where the wind is coming from. When the wind blows from this direction they go where the wind is coming from. Why because they want to see the source of the wind. When problems come your way, you don't run away from trouble, you follow trouble. And somebody will then ask me, mama, how do you follow trouble? You come to the house of the Lord. When you come to the house of the Lord you raise your hands you close your eyes you scream like a crazy person that problem that you are having will say utomile jwana o ile mola ne re sa nyaka iya She went to that place we didn't want her to go Eh In other words you followed your problem Pelai let me let me tell you a secret Murud You can never know your problem until you go to the house of the Lord. Eh? When we reach the house of the Lord, makunutuka ofela tshole pepenene. Ke bolela net. When we reach the house of the Lord, all the secrets they must come out. One way or the other. When you are being laid hands on when the spirit of the Lord is moving, your problem will just come out and run away. Why because you came to the wrong place. You followed the problem where it is. When you come to the house of that what you do is when you reach the house of the Lord you tell yourself I just want to be stubborn. You know stubbornness has helped me a great lot. I'm telling talking about myself. I am a very stubborn Christian. Why did I decide to become stubborn? Because I saw that if you are not stubborn in Christ, you will never reach your destiny. If that day when Paul they stoned him, he was not going to write this words that he has written, not that I have already accepted I have all that I wanted, but I still press on. Mm. He would have said nakia tuela u tshola le ba pulusa ba charis. Am I right? Hallelujah. You know we Christians of today when we meet problems says we run away from the presence of the Lord. Can't we were supposed to run to the presence of the Lord. 
so that our problems can be solved. What we do best is, you will forgive me if you kill What do we do best is, we go from one man of God to another man of God. Let me tell you something. Your problem will never be over until you learn to hold on. The only thing that is wanted in your Christian life is that you hold on. When you are holding on, it is not the time to play. When you are holding on, it is not also the time to fast. When you are holding on, is the time to quote scriptures. Is the time to say what you know about your God. When you have a problem, like when you are sick, when this sickness is beating you up, you stand up and you say, I know it is written, by his stripes I am healed. You pain, I'm hearing you today for the last time. I will never hear you again. And it does not mean that after speaking those words, the pain will run away. The pain will go on. It only needs you to be stubborn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you must be stubborn. You must hold fast. Let me give you an example. When somebody has fallen into the valley, you know valleys, Karamukoti, when they want to take that person out, by saying, Tapo, I'm happy because others, you know, I said Tapo again. And they took also some old clothes or blankets so that the person can put them around himself or herself, tie himself by the rope, isn't it? After tying himself by the rope, they will say to him, give us a sign so that we can start pulling you out. Maybe they have told the person, do one, two, three, so that we can know we can start pulling you out. Immediately they saw that person doing that sign. They will say to the person in the valley, in the hole, hold on to the rope. And I'm going to hold on to the why? Because this person knows that if this rope can just cut right now, it's finished. Are you hearing me? Now when they say hold on, the person makes sure that he tie herself himself so good so that even if something can happen, that rope will never break and he will never fall down again. And when he tie himself or herself, they will pull him out, out until he reach the surface of the hole. Isn't it? Now what we are lacking as Christians, we are not able to hold on to the rope. Hold fast to the rope of salvation. I call salvation a rope. Because your life is in the pit. You need a rope that is called salvation to take you out of the pit. Your life right now is Mengel Moose, it's mixed up. You need the rope salvation to take you out of that pit. Your life right now, you don't even know black or blue, white or red. Everything is mixed up in your life. You need the rope called salvation that you hold on to it so that somebody can be able to hold you and take you out of that hole. You cannot do it alone. You need to hold fast. Hallelujah. Can you tell somebody that is close to you? Hold fast one issue. It does not mean that people that are going to discourage us will not come. They will come. I have met so many people who discouraged me along the way. But look at me today. God is still with me. 
Now when you are moving along the road of salvation, you need to hold fast. Can you please tell the person close to you, hold fast. Is then you'll be able to attain what God wants you to have. Ke wona ta hwetsa ntlela modimanya ka ngwe ba le yona. Dinto tsa modimwa di ti mahala. There is a song that we love to sing that says le godimo le ya berekelwa. We must work for heaven. Hmm? Are we working for heaven? Paul says Fight a good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That's thing number one. When you are holding on, it's because rinya kabo pilobo busa feli. Can you ask the person that is close to you? Unya kangmo. What do you want here? Really, we chang unya kang leta ukwali na. Ask, ask, ask. Come on, ask. What do you want? Can I have one person to tell me what is it that you want today? Hmm? Just one. I know that when I go to ask you, when I come to ask you, somebody will say, "Mama, I'm here because I have a problem. I'm here because I'm sick. Hmm? I'm here because there is trouble in my house. My house is on fire." I'm here because I want God to change my husband. I'm here because Banko Shilem Sebenzil. They've sat me at work. So I want prayers that maybe they can call me again in January. Am I right? Huh? Am I right, Bazalwan? So the Bible says, when we are holding on to the rope of salvation, The first thing that we get is eternal life, non-negotiable. When we hold on to salvation, eternal life is a portion. When you hold on to salvation, eternal life is not negotiable. You don't negotiate about it. You just get it mahala. Why? Because you are holding on to your salvation. For us to be able to reach where God wants us to reach, we must hold on to our salvation. Hallelujah. Tell somebody that is close to you, hold on to your salvation. Let us go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12. Quick. We read verse 1, 2 and 3. Can I read? It is therefore we also since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with faith with endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down right now at the right hand of the throne of God somebody say hallelujah hallelujah The Bible says let us consider the person who made us to have the rope salvation our Lord Jesus Christ The Bible says he came to earth he suffered a lot but he endured the shame for the sake of you and me so that we can have our salvation What Jesus went through was pain. What Jesus went through nobody could stand it. Most of the time the Bible will say he will separate with his disciples and go and pray. 
until he reached a stage where he said, Father, let this cup be taken away from me. And he reversed his word to come and say, but my God, my Father, let it not be my will, but let it be your will. Now the Bible here is telling us, is saying, if we want to be able to hold on, let us put away the deeds of the flesh and the sin that holds us so that we may not be able to hold on to salvation. If you are having sin, you cannot hold to salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you having a sin? If you have that sin, you cannot hold on to salvation. That is why the Bible is saying we must put them all away and take an example of Christ Jesus who went to the cross for you and me so that we can have a robe that we will hold on to. I believe Christians today, we were supposed to be people that are so proud about our salvation. Now it's upside down. It's the other way around. When you come into the place where there are many people, you cannot even express yourself that you are a Christian. Am I right? Huh? When you come in the midst of people, when they start to speak their things, you cannot even express yourself that I am a child of God, born again. Before the wedding of my son, something happened. We went to a certain place and there was a, a problem. I don't know what my son did. He bumped somebody's car. When we reached there, there was this brother. He said to us vividly, I don't trust anybody. And I said to him, we are Christians. We can never lie to you. I don't trust anybody. I'm also a Christian. But I don't trust anybody. We tried to explain. My daughter explained and explained. And explained. I was just looking there. And I was quiet. Looking at him. He said, no, no. I don't trust Christians. At the end of the day, I said, brother. Give me a paper. Give me a pen. I want to write something. And I wrote down whatever that I've written. At the end of the day, I made my signature. And I took the paper, I gave it to him. Then I said to him, my brother, if anything happens to my signature, hey, you will know me. And he stood like, I said, you said you don't trust anybody. So now I'm trying to be fair to you because I'm doing what you want us to do. Though we are telling you, we are coming back tomorrow because there are things we have to take. So we cannot run away. We are children of God. After doing what I've done, I said to him, if anything happens to this signature, my brother, you will see the other side of me. Why? Because I've been fed to you, explaining to you that I am born again. I am a child of God. On top of that, I am a pastor. I can never lie to you. He said, I don't trust anybody. I said, okay. Give me brother paper, pen. I wrote foolish things there. I said, for my signature, you are going to pay me 50 rand. <laughs> and I signed. Sometimes I do foolish things. I gave it to him. When the paper came, he read the paper. And he looked at me. He said, mama, why is the 50 rand for? I said, for my signature. And on top of that, if anything happens to my signature, oh brother, I don't know what will happen to you. If you can take my signature, go and forge it somewhere and use it because it happened to me before. Ah, the whole earth will come on top of you. When I finished saying those words, he went to the person who was supposed to be worrying and grumbling. And said, take your paper. Take your paper. I cannot go with it. I, I can't. I said, no, sister, give it to him. 
It's long he's been telling us we have to size. My brother, for the first time, there is no police officer here. Huh? And number two, there is no lawyer. I'm not good in these things of laws, you'll pardon me. There is no lawyer also in this place. But you are forcing me and my daughter to sign. Now we have signed. Take the paper and go with it at all. It was hard for him to handle it. He said, I can never go with this paper home. It's better you see, see take your paper and go with it at home. Because what this mother is saying, I don't want it to... Because he was afraid that if this signature can do something, oh, oh the whole South Africa will be on top of you. Why did I say those kind of things? Because he said it vividly. I don't trust anybody. Now we are living in a world today. We are living with people, Pastor, who will tell you, I don't trust you. You say, I will do this. They say, I don't trust you. You say, I've been doing this. They say, I don't trust you. Even though you say, I am a child of God, they say, hey, we don't trust pastors these days. What they said must not bring your faith down. Rather, it must make you stronger in the Lord. If they say those kind of words to you, then when you reach home, when you go back, you say to yourself, are you hearing me? It means when you go home, you tell yourself, I am holding fast to the Lord. The people that I'm living with cannot see the God that is in me. Now they are telling me that I am holding on but not so tight. From today, I am going to hold on so tight that whenever they want to pull me out, my salvation will happen for me. God will be able to pull me out of the situation. Hallelujah. Because now, if you are not holding on, it means your salvation is not there. If you are not able to hold on, it means you don't know who died for you. It means if your know, salvation is not holding, it's not standing, you don't know what happened to Christ so that you can be called a born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To be called a born again is the most expensive and important thing you can ever have in life. If you can go around here in the church and ask people, how were you, Neuli Zhuang, when you first come to church? They will tell you a lot of things. Hmm? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I can just pick up somebody here and say, tell me, the first day you came to Charis, how were things going on in your life? You will hear a lot of stories. Hmm? Why? Because for us to have salvation, we must respect the salvation that we are having. Let us not play around by the salvation that God has given unto us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us take an example from Christ Jesus, our Savior, who endured the road towards the cross so that at the end of the day, salvation will be installed on earth so that me and you, we can become born again Christians. It was not easy. But he told himself, not my will, but the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, must hold fast. If you are still angry when people uh, quarrel at you, 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 you haven't started. Eh? If you are still bothered when people are laughing when you pass, mm -mm, you are not holding. You haven't started. If you are still a Christian and you are always falling in your Christian, uh -uh, you haven't started holding. 
When you want to hold on nicely, you must throw away things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, throw away things. Hari pulushi tu yabana babo mairikili sebele ka spedi. Mo pulushon hari pilika urata. Repila uya kale nchila mudimu. In salvation, we don't live according to our own will and love. We move according to the will of the Father. When the Father says, stand, you stand. When he says, sit, you sit. When he said, go, you go. When he said, come, you come. Why? You are holding fast to your salvation. The thing that will make us cry as at the end of the day is, when we reach to heaven, when we stand before the altar of judgment of the Father, the Bible says he will say, go away from me. You workers of iniquity. I don't know you. Eh? Now when temptations come, you must be able to hold on to your salvation. When problems come, you must be able to hold fast. When trouble comes, you must be able to hold fast. Why? Because you have been saved by the most expensive blood of Jesus. Can somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you saved? I'm asking myself a lot of questions now. In the book of James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4, I'll just read part of it. It says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse kinds of temptation. Tell the person that is close to you, count it all joy when you fall into temptation. Let me explain what the Bible is saying. When you are saved, hmm? Okay, let's, let's take our example, Jesus Christ. When he was going to the cross, the Bible says they were beating him. They were kicking him. They were spitting on him. They were doing all kinds of things to him. But in his heart, in his mind, there was only one thing. I have to die for this world. Are you hearing me? When they were doing all these kind of things, there was only one thing. I must die for this world so that I can buy it back to God. It is only through the blood that man can have a relationship with the father. So now, even if they can beat me, I will not die until I reach the cross. Even if they can spit off on me, I will never die until I reach the cross. Even if they can do all these kind of things, I will never die until I reach the cross. Why? Because I have to die while I am on the cross. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. If just so now we last a little lengthy, we are going to go. Never to worry about plus. Am I right? Ah? Then on Bible here. In those problems, if you can remember what Daddy was telling us, the Holy Spirit came and strengthened him. Hmm? When you meet Matata, trouble, one of them, hold on, the Holy Spirit will come and strengthen you. When a Buluichi move, sickness is beating you up, hold on, the Holy Spirit will come and strengthen you. When Jesus was being beaten, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came and strengthened him. And he went on and on with the cross on top of his shoulders so that he can go and die for me and you on top of the cross. So these days, when we meet problems, we say no. You know, what I have been doing, I was just trying to be like Mama Kanani. So would say, I'm not saved. I'm just, if, I'm just following what they're doing. 
Why? Because you are just afraid that people will laugh at you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If when you go out of here, you meet somebody whom you know from way back, and the person asks you, where are you coming from? You are even afraid and ashamed, sorry, to tell the person, I am coming from church. White I know is what people are saying. Am I right? Eh? What is it that you want to do on a Sunday? Sunday is a day of worshipping and blessing the Lord. Now when we are here, we are here to be entrusted by power and to be strengthened so that the next week that is coming, when challenges come to you, you will be able to stand and say, I've been washed by the blood of Jesus. Jesus died for me at Calvary. I cannot fall into sin again. I cannot do these things again. I am a child of God. I have been bought by the expensive blood. I am a child of destiny. Many of us, we are not reaching our destinies because we are not holding on. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, how many times have you failed? Because I'm hearing people saying, Mama, I've been failing for a long time. So I'm telling you, you are failing because you're not holding on. Hallelujah. When you are supposed to give the right answer, you give the wrong one. When you want to hold on, hold fast and be strong. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 and 2. Hold fast the word. And don't believe in vain. You can go, you will read it at home. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 2. It says, hold fast the word that you have heard. And don't believe in vain. What is believing in vain? You are here in the church right now. When we say lift your hands, your hands are above all the Christians that are here. We can only see your hands. Because God has given you mercy. You are even taller than everybody. But when you walk out of here, that Christianity is gone. The things that we do in the dark are so shameful. We believe in vain. Macharis, let me tell you. Stop this thing of believing in vain. I'll explain why I'm saying so. I have met a lot of people when they come to church, Murut, their purpose is they want to be prayed for. Hmm? And yes, we do pray for them. By the grace of God, they get what they want. But, underline that word, but, God says when he was telling the Israelites, I am a jealous God. Eh? I am what? A jealous God. When you leave this place, when you go where you are going, God is not saying come back to Charis Missionary Church. No. He is saying because you have seen me that I can do this for you now. Change your life and start living a holy life. Shun sin, shun wrong things and start to live a righteous life for the glory of my name. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you are in charis, you are in what, what, you are in what, what. As long as you are following what God says. That is why many of us, are after being blessed, we leave the presence of the Lord. The glory of the Lord depart from us. Ichabod is born. And when Ichabod is born, you come back and say, when you leave Makaranisa's church, the grace of Makaranisa will leave you. 
It's not Makananisa, it's God. He's a jealous God. Are you hearing me? Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, we are serving a jealous God. God cannot send Jesus to come and die for us for Mahala. And after agreeing, when we first read the Bible, it says the confession that we made in faith in front of many people. Did you hear that verse? I know, I know. I'm going to make altar call after this. In front of these people, you ran forward. Say, Lord, I'm giving my life unto you today. Father, change me today. Tomorrow, God gives you what you're searching for. And after getting what you're searching for, you go back to your old ways. God says, I am a jealous God. When I do my things, I don't want praises to go to people. When I do my thing, I want praises to come to me. Because I am the author and the finisher of your faith. I am a faithful God. I do not lie. If you are here today as a child of God and God has given you promises, why don't you just test him by holding on? Are you hearing me? Hallelujah, Bazalwan. Let us go today and trust God by doing that, holding on. If you want to watch about I can watch and can offer example. If you want to watch our nasa, get your fish in. Actually, when I fit it, Papa get it. Can I let my child get talk away? I need you. Please help me. When God is still saying, I want to take vacation, I told you when I wear me and I'm Papa, mm -mm. even if it's December, but not December for me. I'm here, Lord, I need your help. I want you to do something in my life. God wants people who are submissive to him. People who will listen to him. If me and you here in Charis today, we can say from today, we want to be submissive. You will see what God will do. Hmm? God can tell you, take you from level to level, power to power. That's what the Bible says. Glory to glory, honor to honor. God does not have limits. It is us who are limiting him. The Bible says, count it all joy when you fall into temptations. Do you know what temptations do? Did he explain to us? When you meet temptations and you stand where you are supposed to stand, you don't shiver. You don't move. You are taken up. Isn't it? And you go forward. When you go forward, things come your way. You don't shiver. You don't become tempted. You don't fall. You stand your ground. You are taken to another level. By the end of 2019, you have already reached your destiny. Are you hearing me? Did he make an example with our pastor there? He said, when you become weary and tired, you go down in faith. Eh? And when you are required to reach your destiny, being a tall woman as you are, when you are short, you won't get what you are searching for. Because God cannot give you what you want when you are a short man. Lazar. Hallelujah. So now, when you are holding on to God, you stand your ground. You stand your stand. When winds come, God wants me to stand as I am. When problems come, God wants me to stand as I am. But the only thing that will enable me to stand and hold fast is the word of God. Let us not believe and put away the faith and we believe in vain. Let us believe in the word of God truthfully. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, hold fast. Believe in the word of God. God wants to do something in your life today. Hallelujah. Let us finish. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21, write it down. Bible iri nko utesite 
Mwalang first. You will read it at home. Test all things and hold fast to what is good. Do what? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. The Bible says, Test all things. Lekula munna. Todishisha. Do introspection. Investigate. And when you investigate, the Bible says, hold fast to that which is good. Hold on to the truth. It's when you have the truth that you will be able to hold fast. Hallelujah. 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 Let us hold fast to our confession. Can we stand? I'm sorry to make you stand. Do you know how many we are? Now I want to make an example. Eh? Are you allowing me? Eh? In the book of Revelation, you will study it at home. Chapter 2, verse 24 to 26. The Bible says, He who overcomes and keep my deeds until the end to him I will give authority and power. If you hold fast, you hold on, you hold tightly, God will give you authority and power at the end. You will be able to reign above nations. You will be able to control powers. You will be able to declare things and they happen. Why? Because you've been given the power because you hold it on. That is why you see us being Christians, but we don't have power. It's because we have never been given authority. We are powerless. We are authorityless. Don't mind my English. Eh? We are powerless and authorityless. Why? Because we were not able to hold on. The Bible says hold on until the end. The end means until you reach where you are supposed to. Not until Jesuabu. Yeah. Eh? It also means until Jesuabu Yamara, until the end, until where you are supposed to reach. And when you reach where you are supposed to reach, God is going to give you authority and power. God is going to exalt you. God is going to take you to the next level. But if you haven't reached where you are supposed to, you are going nowhere. Hallelujah. The problem is we cannot hold fast. We are Christians without power. We stand there and declare in Jesus' name nothing happens. We stand there and we say, I prophesy. The rain will come tomorrow and the rain does not come. I'm not saying I'm prophesying. I'm giving example. Are you hearing me? Now the Bible says, hold on until the end. Until the end. Where is the end? Your destiny. Before we pray, I want to call all of these that are still saying, Ma, I've been falling a thousand, a million times. I don't even understand why I am falling. Please run to the front now. I'm not going to take much long. Run to the front now. You know, I've been falling. When this thing comes, I fall. When this one comes, I fall. I just find myself falling. Still, I want to do the right thing, but I cannot do the right thing. I just fall. That is why I cannot even hold on. Hold on to what God has promised me. This rope is the last one. Huh? You've been going up and down, having a lot of ropes. I'm not saying you tie ropes on your body. I mean being told a lot of things. They never worked. Our only hope is in Christ Jesus. If you can hold this rope, you will surely reach your destiny. That spirit that is bothering you each and every night will never come to you again. 
As long as you are standing and you are holding fast. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Can you please raise your hands unto the Lord? I want to pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Yalabasa Turushika. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him all the way. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, Say it in your heart. God, where you lead me, I'm going to follow you. Can you raise your hands to the Lord? Raise your hands, close your eyes. I want to pray. I want you to pray on your own self. You know where you are falling each and every day. You know where you are not making it. You are praying. But this thing does not seem to go away. You go on top of mountains, down the rivers, but this one is not going away. So I want you to pray for yourself. Then I will come and pray for you. You say, Daddy, Father, I've fallen 20 times this year. Yalabasatu. Yandoroshima. 
Lord, I've fallen 20 times this year because of the same thing. I know I'm not holding on. I lack your word. Can you please pray? Pray, pray louder. Sometimes you're falling because you don't answer the right way. In English, they say you are rude to people. And the demons come and attack you again and again. Lord, I'm tying to my life. I want to be led by your spirit. Holy Spirit of my Father, these are your children. Dear Father, these are your children. A generation of change, you said. You said, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. Hold on. Hold fast. Hold that rope of salvation. Don't allow anything to take it away from you. You need this salvation. The world is so cruel outside. But if you don't know your word, if you don't know the B-I-B-L-E, you'll never make it. Pray, pray louder. Thank you, Spirit of the Lord. Oh, yalala, soto, shikama. Yandorosika. I cry for my nation. I cry for my people. I cry for generations to come. We need your word. We need your word. We must hold fast. Yeah, we say we are Christians, but we don't have the word. Oh God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Raise your hands up to the Lord. Say, Father, oh, in the name of Jesus, I come to you today. Father, forgive me. I have fallen many times. I don't want to fall again. Give me that rope again. I want to hold on to my salvation. I want to stand in my salvation. I want to follow your word. I want to have your word in me. I want to look into your word. Grab what will feed my spirit. Fill my spirit with your Holy Spirit. Father, as I'm raising my hands before you, can you please raise your hands high? The Spirit of the Lord is here. As I'm raising my hands before you, touch me, Heavenly Father. Change me, Heavenly Father. I don't want to fall again. I don't want to fall into the pit again. I want to stand for the glory of your name. Today I come back to you. Take me back to you again. Fill me with your spirit again. Fill me with your power again. Fill me with your anointing again. Lift your hands to the Lord. Close your eyes. The spirit of the Lord is coming upon you. The Bible says as Jesus prayed. The spirit of the Lord came and strengthened him. That he may be able to endure. What is meeting along the road. When he was going to the cross. You need to be strengthened today. By the spirit of the father. So that you can be able to conquer these temptations. These trials, mm -hmm. 
The Bible says, count it all joy when you meet diverse kinds of temptations. Because temptations are there to check you. They are your checking point. To check if you are still standing. And if you are still standing, you will stand. And you will be able to reach where God wants you to reach. I command every false spirit. I command every evil spirit. That is trying to block you. Whomever you are, wherever you are, your spirit. I command you to leave the children of my father. The children of Calvary. The children of the Lord. Leave my people. Leave them alone. Come out and go. Leave this house. You spirit of discouragement and your foolish eggs. We don't want you anymore in this place. We don't want you anymore in this place. From today, we are going to hold on. We are going to hold fast. Take it. Wherever you are, take the spirit of the Lord. Take the spirit of the Lord to strengthen you. Take it. Take it in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the spirit of the Lord. Be filled, Papa. Be filled with the spirit of the Lord. Be filled. Take it. You demon, leave. Come out in the name of Jesus, sissy. Come out, you demon. Leave. Leave. Go. You don't have a place anymore. We are children of the Most High God. Keep watching Charis TV.